Okay, let's talk about some terms that you're going to need to know the definitions of to answer these questions. The first term I want to talk about is list price, um, also, known to, also known as selling price. Um, this is just the price of a product as indicated on the store shelf or in an advertisement. So if you go to the store and you see an item on the shelf and there's a price tag there and it says $12.99, that is the list price of the item. Uh, very straightforward. Um, the next bit of terminology we have is the word cost. Um, some people will mix up the words cost and price and think they mean the same thing. Um, they actually don't. In this context, the word cost is referring to the dollar amount that the business or company pays to a supplier or manufacturer for a product. So the store that you're buying the product from had to buy that product from somebody else. The price that they paid for that product is what we call the cost. So the store that you're buying that item for that's $12.99, they may have bought that item for $7 from the manufacturer or the supplier. That's the cost. Um, the next item is markup. Markup is the difference between these two things. It's the difference between the list price and the cost. Um, and you can actually make a formula out of that, right? Markup is equal to list price minus cost. So if you buy an item for $15, or that's what the list price is anyway, $15, and the cost was $8, that means that the markup was $7, right? It's the difference between those two things. So the store buys a product for a certain cost, they then sell it to you, they list it at a certain list price, the difference between those two amounts is the markup. Okay, the next thing we should talk about is markup percentage. The markup percentage is the markup, but it's expressed as a percent of the cost. So rather than saying the markup is $5 or $10 or $50 or whatever, we say that the markup percentage is 10%, 20%, you know, whatever it is. And so to figure that out, all you have to do is list price minus cost, which is your markup, right? So this is equal to the markup. You take that markup, you divide it by the cost, right? And that will give you your percent, right? Well, you multiply by 100 and then you get your percent. If you don't multiply it by 100, you'll get that decimal value instead. Um, but that's all you have to do. You divide the markup by the cost times 100. That's your markup percentage. Now we also have something that's called a markdown. Uh, a markdown is a permanent reduction in price due to an inability to be sold. So um, if a product is listed for $15 and they're not, you know, no one's really buying them, they can't sell it, um, then they might say, okay, we're gonna reduce the price uh, permanently um, to maybe half of that. So uh, again, if you're selling something for $15 and no one's buying it, Maybe you list it for $10 or $8 or $9, something like that. That's what we would call a markdown. Um, and that reflects a lower market value. So it's often permanent um, long-term and it's a reevaluation of what a product is actually worth. Um, with all that being said, we can put together a few different equations. Um, we can put together a few different equations for list price. So we said before that markup was equal to the list price minus cost. If you rearrange that, you can get list price is equal to cost plus markup. Just using your basic algebraic skills, you should be able to come up with that equation. It's the same equation, just rearranged. So if you ever wanna know what the list price is, just say, oh, we know the cost, we know the markup amount, add them together, and that's the list price. You also have this other equation for if instead of uh, being given the markup amount, you're given the markup percent. So if you're ever given the markup percent, all you have to do is say one plus the markup percent, multiply that by the cost, and you will get your list price. So if uh, an item is marked up, we'll say 50%, you have to write that in here as 0.5. So one plus 0.5 or 1.5, and you multiply that by the cost and it gives you the list price. The next thing we'll look at is discount. Um, some people get discount and markdown uh, kind of mixed up. They are similar, so they both refer to a decrease in the price. 
However, markdown, as we said, is permanent and it's due to different market factors, whereas a discount or a sales discount, or you might just know it as a sale, um, is often temporary. And it's a temporary reduction in the price due to either a promotional reason or maybe it's a holiday or, you know, something like that. So sometimes you'll see a store is having like a 40% off sale um, for a particular week or a particular month or something. That is often a discount for some promotional reason. Um, it doesn't actually change the valuation. And that word valuation refers to what the actual value of the item is, right? They're not admitting that, oh, this item actually isn't worth this much. It's actually worth less. They're saying that we're just going to offer it at a lower price temporarily um, to try to drive sales. That's different from a markdown, which when they change the value, or sorry, when they change the price, that reflects that the value of the item should actually be lower. So they're admitting it's not actually worth as much. We need to lower it in order to sell more. So those two things are rather different. So pay attention to that. Um, we also have tax. Most of you probably know what tax uh, refers to already. Um, it's an additional cost that you might pay on a product. Uh, and that additional cost goes to the government, um, provincial government, federal government. Um, in Canada, we have the harmonized sales tax, also called HST. Uh, in Ontario, it's 13%. In every other province, it's uh, 15%, but in Ontario, it's just 13. So if you buy a product off the shelf, uh, whatever the price is, you have to pay an additional 13%. And again, that goes to the government. We then have the net price. The net price is the final amount that the consumer will pay for an item. So if you go into a store and you see on the shelf an item's listed for $12.99, well, first you would deduct any sort of discounts that are going on. So if there's a sale or something like 40% off, you take that off. If there is one, if there's not, then you don't worry about it. Um, and then you might have to pay, well, you'll likely have to pay taxes on it, the 13% HST. Um, and if there's any fees, we haven't talked about fees specifically because it's not that common, but occasionally there might be a fee for an item that you buy. Um, there, I know there are certain fees associated with uh, um, items that have like a, a carbon footprint, or if you're buying something online, there might be a fee associated with it. So those are some situations where that might come up. But for the most part, um, you'll be looking at the list price and you'll be adding the taxes to it. If there's a discount, you subtract the discounts. If there's a fee, you have to add the fee as well. So it all depends on the situation. Now let's take a look at some examples. First example here, the cost of a product was $156.79. The list price is $349.99. What is the markup? So again, when we say the cost, that's how much the store that you're buying it from had to pay uh, the supplier for this item. So they bought an item for this much and now they're selling it to you for this much. So they're selling it to you for more because they're trying to make money, of course, right? So the question is, what is the markup? Well, remember, markup is just the difference between these two amounts, right? It's the list price minus the cost. So we can say that the markup is equal to $349.99 minus $156.99. 79 this will give you the markup it's just the difference in those two values if you subtract these two amounts your answer which is going to be in dollars will be 193 dollars and 20 cents if you do this calculation you'll get 0.2 remember cents we have to have two decimals so i'll say 0 0.20 right 20 cents so this will be your markup okay next example the cost of a product was $78.89. The list price is $139.99. What is the markup percentage? So again, markup percentage is referring to the same thing as markup, but it's expressed a little differently, right? Rather than being expressed as a dollar amount, it is expressed as a percent of the cost. So we can use our formula for the markup percentage. Um, so I'll say markup percentage, I'll just use MP for markup percentage, is equal to the markup, which is the list price minus the cost, divided by cost times 100, just like that. So the list price was 139.99 minus the cost, which is 78.89, divided by 78.89 times 100. 
Um, if you don't want to uh, use this formula, you can just say, oh, I'm going to find the markup by subtracting, and then after that, divide it by the cost. You can absolutely do that. This formula just kind of puts it all together for you. Okay. So let's calculate this. So first you subtract these numbers on top. You then divide that answer by the 78.89, and then you multiply it by 100. If you do all that, you should get 77.45 as an answer, and that is a percent, right? This 100 you're multiplying by is 100%. So your answer is 77.45%. That is the markup percentage. So let's go to the next question. Next question says a product was marked up 80%. If the cost was $12.50, what is the list price? So if you want, you can use the same formula, right? The markup percent is equal to the list price minus the cost divided by cost times 100%. And you can plug in what we have and try to divide and so you can plug in what we have and try to solve for the list price, right? That's what we're interested in finding. So the markup percent is 80%. We're looking for the list price. The cost we know is 1250, uh, 12.5, 12.5 times 100%, right? This is a percent, this 80 is also 80%, right? Um, and then we'll solve for the list price. So first I'll divide both sides by the 100 um, like this. Divide both sides by 100%. These will cancel. Uh, on the left, you'll have 0 0.8 is equal to list price minus 12.5 over 12.5, just like that. And from here, you can multiply both sides by 12.5. If you do that, on the left-hand side, you will get 10. 10 is equal to the list price minus 12.5. And then add the 12.5 to the other side. You'll get 22.5. 5 is the list price. So the list price was $22.50. So if you go into the store and you see the item on the shelf, this will be the dollar amount that the item is worth or that it's being listed as. Okay, let's go to the next question. The list price of a product is $79.99. If it was marked up 40%, what was the cost? Okay, so if you want to use the same formula, you can. The markup percentage is equal to the list price minus the cost divided by cost times 100%. Okay, markup percent we know is 40%. We're told that it's equal to the list price, which is 79.99 minus cost divided by cost times 100%. So we'll solve for C. The first thing I'll do, divide both sides by 100%. If you do that on the left here, you'll get 0 0.4. So 0 0.4 equals 79.99 minus C over C. Uh, multiply both sides by C. So 0 0.4 C is equal to 79.99 minus C. You can then say, okay, let's put those C's on the same side. So maybe I'll take this minus C and put it over here. So we'll have C plus 0.4C equals 79.99. Uh, I'll finish the work over here. Um, so C plus 0.4C is 1.4C is equal to 79.99, like that. Divide both sides by 1.4, and you will get 57.14. If you round it to two decimals, which you should, um, because we're talking about dollars, right? So the cost is equal to $57.14. So that's what the store paid for this item. They marked it up 40%, which resulted in a list price of $79.99. Okay, let's go to the next question. What is the new list price of an item that was being sold for $27.99, but is on sale for 40% off? Okay. So we're looking for the new price of this item. It used to be $27.99. It's on sale for 40% off. What's the new price? So basically, let's take 40% off of $27.99. Well, there's two ways you can do this. First, you can try to figure out what is 40% of $27.99, right? So 0 0.4 times $27.99. If you do that, you get 
0.196, so $11, and that would round to 20 cents, but I'm going to leave my rounding for the very end, okay? Um, and then you could say, okay, well, that's how much is coming off, because that's 40%. So the new sale price would be 27.99 minus 11.196, and that would equal $16, and it would be 7.794, so I'll round that up to 79 cents. So this would be the new list price of the item. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it would be to say, okay, it's 40% off, so that means we have 60% remaining, right? Because 40 and 60 make up 100. So you could say 0 0.6 multiplied by 27.99, and that should give you the same answer, $16.79. So however you choose to do this, these methods are both perfectly OK. Um, again, this 0 0.6, I just get that by doing 1 minus 0 0.4. If you want to show that work as well, you can do that as well. Um, that's something that we call uh, the complement um, when you use the other percent instead of the one given. So they gave us 40%. The complement to that is the 60%. Okay, let's go to the next question. What was the original price of a product with a current list price of $30 that has been discounted 25%? Okay, so kind of the opposite of the last question. Instead of having a um, the original price given to us, we're given the new list price. So $30 is what it's being priced at now. That is 25% less than the original, which means that $30 represents 75% of the original amount. Okay, So because we took off 25% of the original amount and we're left with 30, that means that 30 represents 75% of the original amount. I know that because 100% minus 25% is 75%. So you can use that to your advantage. You can say $30 divided by 75%. Now, what would be the point of doing this? Well, if I have $30 and I divide it into 75 parts, what I'm figuring out is how much money is 1%. And the reason you might want to do that is because then if you multiply that answer by 100, you would figure out how much the original amount was. So you can do 30 divided by 75 times 100 to find the original price. If you do that, you're going to get 40 for an answer, $40. Now let's think about if that answer makes sense. If you want to decrease 40 by 25%, that means you would multiply it by 0.75 or you can multiply it by 0.25 and subtract that amount from 40, like how we did the last question. And so, yeah, it totally makes sense, right? 30 is 75% of 40, right? It's three quarters of 40. That should make sense, right? So this is one method that you can use if you want. Um, another way you can do it is you could make a formula. You could say uh, the original amount, we'll call it X, um, is being discounted 25%, so multiply by 1 minus 0 0.25, and that is equal to 30. And then you can solve for x. So this first off is 0 0.75, like that. And then you can divide both sides by 0.75. So x will be equal to 30 divided by 0.75 if you do that math. you will also get 40 as your answer. And again, the answer is in dollars, right? This is $40. That was the original price. Okay, so again, original price here, x multiplied by 1 minus 0.25, because that gives you 0.75, right? We're looking for what 75% of x is, and it's 30. That's what this equation is telling us. That's why this works, okay? Hopefully that's not not too complicated. I personally like to do it this way sometimes. Um, it makes sense more in my head, but however you choose to think about this, um, it's up to you. If you have another method that you like or you figure out another way to do it, by all means, um, that's absolutely fine. Just make sure you show your work on the test. Okay, next question. What is the net price of a product 
listed for $12.99, uh, but you have a coupon for 10% off. Again, we have to remember what net price is, right? The net price is the price that you, the consumer, end up paying for an item when you go to check out, right? That means there's the list price in there, you have to subtract any discounts, and you have to pay taxes on it, right? Um, we'll assume for this question that you're in Ontario, so you have to pay 13% HST, right? That's all included in net price, right? So we have to take into account taxes and discounts. So uh, 12 dollars is the list price. We have a coupon for 10% off, meaning we can multiply this number by 1 minus 0 0.1, which this is just 0 0.9, right? Or 90%. If you take off 10%, you're left with 90%. So you multiply it by that. And once you do that, you get an answer for this. You then remember, oh, I got to add 13% to that. So you can also multiply it by 1 plus 0 0.13. Uh, in other words, we have 1299 multiplied by 90% because we're taking off 10%, multiplied by 1.13. That makes the number a little bigger because we have taxes to pay here, 13%. So you can calculate all of this and you get $13.21. So you save 10% because of the coupon, um, but you still have to pay the 13% on this amount because of uh, taxes. Now, if you didn't have that coupon, it would have been even more expensive, right? Because you'd be taxing the original amount. You wouldn't have this 0.9 in the equation and you'd end up with a bigger number, right? A larger final uh, final net price, um, but we have both of those things, so we have to take them both into account. Okay, let's go to the next question. Uh, what was the list price of an item if you paid $98.12 for it and there was a 5% discount? So the 98.12, that's what you paid, so that is the net price. Okay, so remember the net price is equal to the list price minus any discounts you might have, right, plus taxes, okay? So the net price we have is 98.12. The list price is what we're looking for. I'll call that LP for list price. Um, subtract any discounts. What are the discounts that we have? Well, there's a 5% discount. So I'll say, what is 5%? Um, of the list price, because that's what we apply the discount to, right, is the list price. So minus 0 0.05 times the list price, right, because the discount is discounted on the list price. Whatever it's listed for, that's what we apply the discount to. So I'm subtracting 5% of that list price, and then I'm adding the taxes. The taxes are on all of this, right? So I could say plus 0 0.13 multiplied by, you know, this entire thing here, rewrite it over here, but I don't have to write it like this, right? Instead, what I can do is I can write 98.12 is equal to, instead of saying LP minus 0 0.05 LP, I can just say 0 0.95 LP. I can say that. And then to add tax to it, I multiply it by 1.13, right? In other words, 98.12 is equal to, I can multiply the 0 0.95 and the 1.13 together, and that'll give me 1.0735 LP, like that. And then I just divide both sides by this to find the list price. So the list price will equal 98.12 divided by this number, and that will give me 91 0.40 or $91.40, that must be the list price. So let me just walk you through that one again because that one was a little bit complicated, it looked like. So I'll go back up here. What was the list price of an item that you paid $98.12 for um, if there was a 5% discount? So we know the net price, which is what you paid, the $98.12, is equal to the list price minus any discounts plus any taxes. So the list price, which is what we're looking for, minus the discount. Discount is 5% of the list price, so 0 0.05 times the list price, plus 13% uh, of, well, all of this, right? So 13%, so 0.13 um, of LP minus 0 0.05 LP. 
this is technically a way you could do it and then simplify things and solve for LP. But I said, I don't want to deal with this big messy equation. I'm going to do it this way instead. I'm going to say $98.12, the net price, is equal to the list price multiplied by 0 0.095 because that's how much I'm paying for it after you take off 5%. It's not 100% of the list price. It's 95% of the list price because we took off 5%. And then you multiply that by 1.13 because that will add your 13% taxes for you. So you can just take your list price, multiply it by this percent here, which removes the discount, multiply it by 1.13, that adds the taxes, and now you have a nice formula that is easy to solve for uh, your unknown, right? You have a number is equal to a number multiplied by your list price. So you divide both sides by that, and that's how you get your final answer. Okay, one more question. What is the markup percentage on a product with a cost of $12.50 and a net price of $27.50? So there's a lot going on here, right? We have the cost, $12.50. Um, we want the markup percentage, right? So if you remember, markup percentage is equal to markup, um, which is actually the uh, list price minus the cost. Um, divided by the cost times 100%. That's the markup percent, and that's what they're asking for. So look at the things we need to figure this out. We would need the cost, which we have, right? The cost is 1250, so that goes here and here. Um, but we would need the list price. Well, I don't have the list price, but I do have the net price. Let's remind ourselves of what the net price is, right? Net price is equal to the list price plus uh, taxes minus discounts, right? And in this particular case, there are no discounts uh, being discussed here. So we'll assume there's no discounts, right? So it's just the li list price plus taxes. Um, and another way of saying list price plus taxes is to say 1.13 times the list price. If we're assuming the taxes are 13%, if we're assuming HST uh, in Ontario. Now we know that the net price is 27.50, so I can say 27.5 is equal to 1.13 times the list price. And now we can solve for the list price, right? The list price will be equal to divide 27.5 over 1.13. If you do this, you will get 24.34, if you round it to two decimals, right? Because we want it in dollars, so $24.34. So this you can use as your list price. Plug that into this equation up here. 24.34 minus the cost, which is 1250, divided by the cost, which is 1250. Multiply that by 100%. And what are we going to get? Let's calculate it. This gives you an answer of 94.72%. That is the markup percentage, which makes sense because the cost, 12 and a half, um, is almost doubled by the time you get to the uh, list price, right? It's almost doubled. So you expect an answer that's almost 100%. And yeah, we got an answer that's 94%. So the markup percentage being 94% makes a lot of sense to us.